Good evening, everybody. It is so nice to be back at Soul Food. I love Soul Food. So it feels like a whole new start to a season, but we are still in the middle of what's in a name. But I'm going to begin on a completely unrelated note and say I'd be an absolutely terrible daughter-in-law if I didn't give a big shout-out and happy birthday to my wonderful father-in-law, Tim. So happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to be quiet about that one. <laughs> so tonight is the first Soul Food Back, and we're going to be looking at the name of El Roy, the God who sees me. Now, I couldn't really think of a great introduction for this, and I thought I'd basically lick what everyone else has done and thought, OK, let's see what my name means. So tonight, hi, everybody, I'm Eleanor, and my name means... Um, hang on, means shining light. <laughs> um, I was named after Eleanor from Sense and Sensibility. My parents were watching the movie, absolutely loved the name, and thought that's the one. Um, and then, without realising it, gave me the middle name Jane from Jane Austen, and they had no idea until I picked that out. Now, back in high school, I used to go by the name Ellie. That doesn't happen anymore. I went back to Eleanor, um, but I did pick the nickname Elle. Um, I told my family this, and my very lovely grandma really didn't like the choice of L. She said, do you know that that means the in Spanish? And so she began to keep calling me the for many months afterwards. <laughs> Thankfully, she doesn't do that anymore. But she did bring it up this morning, actually, when she heard L being mentioned, so it's quite funny. Um, but when we began this series, What's in the Name?, Vicky gave us the Hebrew meaning of El, meaning powerful one and God. And I thought, yes, God shining light. I'm going to take that and tell my grandma. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's only one mention of El Roy in the Bible, and that can be found in Genesis 16 um, by Hagar. So let's take a read of Genesis 16. The birth of Ishmael. Now, Sarai, Abraham's wife, had not been able to bear children for him. But she had an Egyptian servant named Hagar. So Sarai said to Abram, The Lord has prevented me from having children. Go and sleep with my servant. Perhaps I can have children through her. And Abram agreed with Sarai's proposal. So Sarai's, uh, Abram's wife took Hagar, the Egyptian servant, and gave her to Abram as a wife. This happened ten years after Abram had settled in the land of Canaan. So Abram had sexual relations with Hagar, and she became pregnant. But when Hagar knew she was pregnant, she began to treat her mistress, Sarai, with contempt. <coughs> then Sarai said to Abraham, This is all your fault. I put my servant in your arms, and now that she is pregnant, she treats me with contempt. The Lord will show who's wrong, you or me. Ab Abram replied, Look, she is your servant, so deal with her as you see fit. Then Sarai treated Hagar so harshly that she ran away. The angel of the Lord found Hagar beside a spring of water in the wilderness, along the road to Shur. The angel said to her, Hagar, Sarai's servant, where have you come from and where are you going? I'm running away from my mistress, Sarai, she replied. The angel of the Lord said to her, return to your mist mistress and submit to her authority. Then he added, I will give you more descendants than you can count. And the angel also said, You are now pregnant and will give birth to a son. You are to name him Ishmael, for the Lord has heard your cry of distress. This son of yours will be a wild man, as unt untamed as a wild donkey. He will raise his fist against everyone, and everyone will be against him. Yes, he will live in open hostility against all his relatives. Thereafter, Hagar used another name to refer to the Lord who, sh who had spoken to her. She said, You are the God who sees me. She also said, Have I truly seen the one who sees me? So that, so that well was named De Lahai Roy, which means, Well of the living one who sees me. It can still be found between Kadesh and Barat. So Hagar gave Abram a son, and Abram named him Ishmael. Abram was 86 years old when Ishmael was born. Now, when I first read that story for the first time, and I'm sure if you've never read that story or heard that story, it's a little bit shocking to hear in the Bible. Um, 
But God uses these situations throughout the Bible and some really amazing stories and amazing people to speak to us. I'm really hoping that he will do that again tonight. Um, now, they must have been so desperate to have a child. He's 80, in late 80s and he's just had um, Hagar's child. I think they must have been so desperate to go against God's plan for marriage and the plan that they had for their lives. Now, Hagar became pregnant, becomes pregnant, and Sarai can't seem to stand it. Hagar was probably thinking, Sarai isn't quite needed anymore. Maybe she's the one that needs to be the wife and get rid of Sarai. Maybe she despises that the child will end up being Sarai's. I read that Sarai was given permission by Abraham to do, do with what her whatever you see fit. And we really see who's boss there. Now, Hagar flees uh, into the wilderness, alone and pregnant. I can't begin to imagine how she was feeling and probably fearing for her life. And then we get to the important part, Elroy. Go back and submit to Sarai. I really don't think that this is what she's wanting to hear when she's ran away, pregnant, alone, and has absolutely nothing. But what she hears next is somewhat strangely encouraging to her. I will give you more descendants than you can count. And the angel who said, you are now, the angel also said, you are now pregnant and will give birth to a son. You are to name him Ishmael, for the Lord has heard your cry of distress. This son of yours will be a wild man, as untamed as a wild donkey. He will raise his fist against everyone, and everyone will be against him. Yes, he will live in open hostility against all his relatives. Now, it seems a bit mixed news, but she focuses on the God who sees her. And this is the first thing that I want to encourage you with tonight. We have four little things that I want to pull out of this story. And that first one is God sees you too. Have you ever felt like you're running into the wilderness, just like Hagar did? Have you ever found yourself struggling to submit to the circumstances that you're in? Have you ever been so lost in a crowd that you just don't feel significant enough? Well, God sees you. And even better than Hagar's situation, God sees your circumstances. He saw them many, many years ago and knew the pain that you'd have to endure and face or the heartache that you'd experience. And instead of leaving it to you on your own, he sent his son to die for you because he sees you. Now, when you see someone, maybe a friend or a spouse or a significant person in your life, you know them. You know everything about them. You know their name, their favorite things, the way they cope under pressure, the way they react to things that they love. Now, I know that Matt gets emotional at long lost family or when he sees someone crying on the TV. Sorry. I know that Tim gets very excited when he's off on holiday or gets to see his grandson or has a really good curry. <laughs> <laughs> I know that Heather enjoys a really good book while sitting on the beach with a cocktail, and you'll be doing that very soon. <laughs> now, I know a lot about those three, but that's what I'm going to share tonight. Um, <laughs> but when you see a person, you know what they're facing you know how to help them along. Now, God knows what you're facing. He knows the hairs on your head. He knows the thoughts that you have. He knows the deep, intense feelings that you experience, and he knows everything because he sees it. But my question to you is, are you happy with what God sees? Now, Hagar thought her circumstances needed transformation, but in fact, she's the one that needed the transformation. And maybe that's you. Maybe tonight you need that transformation. And secondly, very simply, God hears you. Now, it says here, you are now pregnant and will give birth to a son. You are to name him Ishmael, for the Lord has heard your cry of distress. Now, Ishmael means God hears you. If God heard Hagar's cry of distress, he's definitely heard yours too. We are so blessed to have the power of prayer. He hears every prayer that you say. Whether or not you think he'll answer, he hears you. He hears you when you're up at night praying for an answer. He hears you when during your quiet time alone. He hears you when you're trekking across the mountains in Spain. He hears you when you're in work or in school and getting through the day. He hears you when you're sat here tonight at Soul Food, listening to the sermon or being in worship and wondering if he heard your last prayer. He does hear you. 
Thirdly, God sees your needs. Matthew 6, 8 says, Your father knows what you need before you ask him. How encouraging is that? How many times has God provided for you and you are on next steps? But do you actually reflect enough on the things that you've, you've been through and the new faith, the trials that you're going to face or in the times of need? Now, he saw what Hagar needed by naming her child and giving her a plan and telling her to go back to Zai because that's where he knew that she would be safest. The wilderness just wasn't safe for her alone. Remember, though, to ask him for what you need before you... Well, ask him for what you need. In Matthew 6, 11, we read, Give us today our daily bread. He teaches us to ask for things. And I think we really need to remember to do that. Just don't expect things to fall into your plate, um, into your lap. You have to ask. So don't hesitate to pray, to pray for them. And finally, point four, is God knows your name. This is a really powerful one for me. Hagar has been known as Sarai's slave for years. And I wonder when someone last used her name and really addressed her of who she is. And God used her, and he addresses her. Hagar, Sarah, Sarah's servant, where have you come from, and where are you going? Now, I've always found it fascinating when God uses people's names, or when somebody says, oh, yeah, God, God used somebody to, um, to reveal that he knows my name. And I was like, I want that. I want God to be like, I want to know, like, he knows my name. Um, and actually, a few years ago, back in 2018, um, I was halfway through my degree, and I was in a really sticky situation and didn't really feel like I was doing the right things. Um, and a couple of my friends and I, we were like, right, we're going to go off to church camp, we're going to uh, go and listen to all the sermons, and we're going to get back to that place where we know we need to be. And um, at the end of every single sermon there, I would be up on my feet, at the front, in tears, like, I want to, be, I want to receive, I want something. And by the end of the week, I was absolutely exhausted. <laughs> and we had two meetings a day, so it was quite a lot. Um, and the final meeting happened, and we got through the sermon, and I realised, oh, this doesn't actually relate to me. Thank goodness. Like, I can actually have a break from crying <laughs> and receiving. And um, halfway through this response time, Everyone was being prayed for at the front. I was sat there quite happy, thinking, I'm going to go home, no longer have to camp in the wet and horrible um, rain. And I, in the middle of it, the leader came up the front and said, so I really think there's some people here who are looking to go into the media or to do politics, or maybe you're studying journalism. And I just sighed and laughed, and I was like, I'm studying journalism. I was like, that's just so annoying. <laughs> I've wanted one night of nothing. <laughs> but God was like, no, 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 that's not going to happen. Um, and then I remember getting up and looking around. There must have been 5,000 people in that room. And I was the only one stood up and had all these eyes on me. And I thought, oh, no, this is even worse. I'm going to be crying in front of all these people. I just know it's all going to go like horrible. But anyway, I stood there, put my hands out, and a few people came around and prayed for me. And um, I, I was properly into prayer, and I was thinking, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm okay, I'm okay. And then this lady voice came into, the, into my ear, and she just said, Eleanor. And I remember standing there thinking, okay, maybe she's seen my name on my wristband. And I looked down, and my wristband was face down, and nobody could see it. Um, and then I looked to see where my friends were. My friends were off two of them, just two, praying for other people. And I was like, I don't know this lady. I've never met this lady in my life, but she said my name. And what well, you can guess what happened. I bawled my eyes out, of course I did. Um, because I realised God knows my name, and he used this woman to, to, to make me see that. Now, I don't know if you've ever had that experience before, but it doesn't really matter if somebody doesn't say your name. God knows your name, and he will use it when he needs to. It's exactly the same for you. I'll never forget that moment when I was in the middle of misery and distress, in the middle of pain and heartbreak, and God knew my name. He heard my cries. He knew what I needed, 
and he saw me just as I was. Now, it's exactly the same for you. God sees you. He is our voice. And if you're sat here tonight feeling like a stranger to God, maybe you've never met him or you've never acknowledged him before. If you're sat here tonight feeling forgotten or lost, or maybe stuck in difficult circumstances, maybe you're finding it difficult to submit to the circumstances you're in. Now take comfort in the God who is our voice. He sees you.